What's up guys and welcome back to another video and welcome to a video looking at Chromeboxes. Now a few weeks ago many of you will already know I tested a Zotac mini PC and this thing was around about the size of a USB stick. It connected over HDMI to any monitor, any TV and turned it into a fully fledged Windows PC. And it was really impressive but it didn't have enough power to actually be useful for day to day use. But the concept was great. So I got in touch with Asus and basically asked if they had anything that would be slightly better but still very cost effective. To which they sent out this, which is a Chromebox. Now a Chromebox is like a Chromebook, except rather than being a laptop, it is a desktop. And it's incredibly small, it's literally around about the size of my hand. It can sit on a desk, it can sit on the back of your monitor. And then again, it turns any monitor into a fully fledged PC. But this time it runs Chrome OS which in all honesty is less useful than Windows, but it's a lot lighter, which means that if you only wanna do basic tasks on your computer, it's a great way of getting a more affordable computer that will do everything you want without having to pay for power that you're not going to use. But are they actually worth buying or are they just great in concept? Well, it all begins with the Chromebox itself. And this Asus version packs some decent power but it's definitely nothing that's gonna blow your socks off. It features an Intel Celeron processor, two gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of solid state storage, and then you've also got AC Wi-Fi as well. So those specs don't really sound very impressive, but they're not, but they don't need to be because it is a lighter OS. In terms of the size of it, well, it's gonna easily tuck away out of sight. There is a power button on the front that you are going to need to press. So if you do stick it on the back of your monitor, this does make it slightly more difficult to turn on and off, but it's not really an issue. On the front, you will find two USB ports and these are actually fast charging ports if you wish to connect your phone and actually charge that a little bit quicker. You've also got an SD card reader. Then you've got two additional USB ports on the back along with an ethernet socket, headphone jack, a HDMI and display port. I'll go over this a little bit later, but on this particular model, um, I would advise sticking with a 1080p display really as it does struggle to drive anything over that. But it is gonna be up to you and it may well be worth trying it out if you do have a high resolution monitor, but obviously the performance will almost certainly suffer. The setup process of the Chromebox is incredibly simple. You simply need to get a HDMI or DisplayPort cable, plug it into the back and then plug it into your monitor, job done. You also do get in the box a keyboard and mouse both of which are wireless. The keyboard, it's nothing exceptional, but actually it's not too bad at all. And I really don't think anyone will have a problem with it. The mouse looks all right at first. It's also wireless, but then you realize that your hand is significantly bigger than the mouse and it's not gonna be the easiest thing out there to operate. And then once you get to the log on screen, anyone can simply log in with their Google Chrome details or their Google, Google account details and then you'll be greeted with a familiar looking desktop and there you can launch the web browser, you can launch apps or you can just pretty much get on and do your usual things. The main caveat with a system like this is that there is very limited storage. You've only got that 16 gigabytes of solid state storage here, but this is deliberate because you're meant to be storing everything on Google Drive and uploading it to the cloud. This means that it doesn't matter where you are, you can always access your files and it's a lot more uh, easy uh, to uh, recover from say like a power loss if you haven't saved your work because it all does this for you. And the experience of using the Chromebox is going to vary from application to application. This really isn't the most powerful machine but if you do just want to get some word processing done then it's going to be perfect for you because typing on the keyboard is absolutely fine but again you can plug your own one in if you do want to speed your uh, typing speed up a little bit and it can hand, handle Google Docs without any issue whatsoever and if you do want to do some sheets or you want to do some presentations through slides all of this is pretty much what Chrome OS is built for it's very easy to use and it's very good uh, for getting work done with very minimal slowdown switching between applications as long as they're lightweight is fine despite the fact that you've only got two gigabytes of RAM but it really isn't going to be ideal if you do want to do a lot of multitasking on here but you're fairly limited in apps anyway, especially on this lower powered Chromebox. You can get certain apps that will run in the Chrome browser and you can get some that you can download. 
The ones that you can download are a little bit more feature rich, but again, they're not really perfect, but you can find some apps that will be pretty useful for productivity. But if you do want to do some even sort of mild workloads, things like photo editing, it's still not really going to be a good choice for you. You can get applications that will do it, but it's really not ideal. But if you literally do just want to, say, watch some YouTube videos, this can handle it in 1080p without issue. It did cope with 1440p okay with the occasional whip stutter. And of course, ramping up to 4K, no, it's not going to work. It's also worth noting that I grabbed a video file from my video camera, stuck it into the Chrome box, and it struggled to play it back. It was very choppy, and when it did start playing, it was artifacted, which was a little bit weird, but it does cement the fact that this isn't a very powerful machine at all, and you've got to be careful what you try and do with it. And you can play some games on there. Chrome has a few uh, web games built in. So you simply just need to go to the Chrome store like you would for any other app. And then there are a few games there that you can either play in your browser or a few you can download. They're very lightweight. They are somewhat reminiscent of the sort of games you could get through Sky TV. Anyone remember that B1 where you're sort of firing the uh, honey or something like that? Anyway, that's a little bit off topic. Point is, they're not very advanced games. But it, you can play the basic games that you want on here. And again, the sort of target audience for a Chromebox isn't going to be wanting to play Battlefield 1 on their Chromebox. And of course, it wouldn't. But if you do want something that can just do all your basic uh, needs, so your email, your web browsing, maybe a light bit of YouTube video watching, or of course, all your actual productivity work, so your banking, your spreadsheets, uh, writing up documents, anything like that, it's going to be ideal. It is definitely worth noting though that if you do have a USB printer, it's probably not going to work. You're going to need a Google Cloud Print enabled printer to actually get things printed from this, which is a little bit annoying and there are a few other workarounds you can do. But if you're like me and you have a USB printer, then it will not work directly with this uh, Chromebox, which is a little bit annoying. And to wrap this whole thing up, the Chromebox is something I really like and it's something I really applaud because I think it's a brilliant idea. Gone are the days of spending a very small amount of money on a computer and then hating it because as long as you're doing lightweight tasks, this thing is great. And this particular model I have very few flaws with and it wins the top purchase award. You can get a more expensive model, it's around about £350, it features a Core i series processor rather than a Celeron processor um, that you'll find in here. But I'm not really sure those are worth it because then you are starting to get a little bit closer to Windows PC territory that you can do more things with and of course you will have something a little bit more powerful but you won't really have that many apps that will be able to take advantage of it in Chrome OS. So there you go, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Are you interested in Chrome boxes? Let me know down in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video or if you want to see a video of me turning an old Windows laptop into a Chromebook. Let's see how well it works. If you're interested in that, please hit the like button, subscribe for more videos just like this, and I will see you in the next video.